Okay, hey Sanjay, how are you? What's good? Hey, what's up, man? I'm I'm great here. Yeah, apparently you have some good news. Yes, I have received an offer from Google as a software engineer. That is amazing. <laughs> how do you feel? I'm uh, I'm still kind of shocked um, that that it happened, but I did work really hard, so just really grateful and really happy overall. Hmm, interesting, you're shocked. The thing is, first time I actually met you like, during this, we had a mock interview session. I the sense I got was, yeah, this guy is pretty good. He just needs to work on his technique. So that's the sense I. Had. I don't know if I shared it, with you, but I had that sense because I meet a lot of people. So I'm not shocked, but obviously it's still quite competitive. Uh, what I was shocked about is your team matching was really quick, but we'll, we'll get to that. So mm -hmm. I just have a few questions, you know, just hoping others who are you know trying out, you know, at least they could learn from your experience and just be the best version of themselves. So like the first thing I was just like, how do you even get the interview? Because some people just apply and they don't hear back. So uh, how did you get the interview? Right. So it's pretty straightforward. I have about a year of experience and I also had a referral. So that definitely helped me out. How did interviews go? So you had well, four rounds and then, you know, you had this team matching and hiring for the team. Was it just four rounds? And how did it go? Like, so like from your perceived experience, like how did it go? And then did you get any feedback? Um, I, all right. Well, from my perspective, they went pretty well, especially um, the behavioral. Uh, that was like the easiest one, I'd say. But the technicals also went really well in the sense that I was able to get the optimal solution for all of the problems and I was able to do all the follow-ups correctly. So that was pretty good. Um, so you, you were able to implement the optimal solution because sometimes some candidates just like, they're, maybe they'll do a brute force and then with some hinting or after some time figure out like the optimal solution and they could explain it, but they might not get a chance to code it out. But you're saying you were able to code it out in all your coding rounds. Well, uh, for two of them, I, I coded it out. And then for one of them, my interviewer didn't want me to code it out. Um, so he just said, that's good enough. But I was able to at least explain the optimal solution. Fair enough. All three technicals. Uh, I did. I did. Go on. Yeah, I wasn't flawless, though. I did have some syntax errors for um, a few of my interviews, um, for two of them. But uh, they were very, very minor. And I feel that my communication was just really great overall i was really explaining my thought process and i was just thinking out loud the whole time but not like too much just like uh, you know i was being pretty logical and everything i said just flowed pretty well given the context of the interview and the nerves and everything um so i think i did really great there my recruiter wasn't able to give me feedback but of course he said you know i did good enough to actually <laughs> make it to the team match so that was good um and then yeah that's 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 how that went. Was it Google Docs? Uh, no, it actually wasn't Google Docs. It was like a, I mean, it was like similar in the sense that it was just like a text editor without any like IDE hints or anything like that. But um, it was like a custom, I want to say custom Google thing, but the company's Google, so Google Docs is also. It, yeah, it was like Google's like enterprise, like, I don't know, text editor. I see. The enterprise Google Docs, it, maybe, maybe. But you obviously could have run your code and there was no, like you said, no syntax highlighting. So it's still, it still weird. Right. So is Google Docs, practicing with Google Docs still still a good idea? Because most people, I guess, yes. will have access to this super fancy enterprise editor. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Good so far. How did you know you came up with the optimal solution? Like Sometimes some candidates think they did, but they might be like another one. So how did you know? Do you done okay. similar problems? Or um, was it like you know that from like some analysis that this can't, you can't do better than this. So for example, you can't do better at constant time, you know, or maybe it was something where you know that you can't do better better than O, o and because you actually maybe have to check each thing to be sure about something. So I'm just curious, because some people always struggle, like uh, how do I know my solution is the most optimal? Okay, for one of them, um, for one problem in particular, I don't want to leak the questions just in case I get in trouble. It definitely don't leak because I want to be able to <laughs> to publish this on YouTube, right? And yeah. Google <laughs> on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I will say that for one of the questions, um, like I guess me and the interviewer were discussing it and it was very apparent that like given, you know, the algorithm, I guess we could say like, it, for example, um, like sorting problems, right? Like there's only so fast you can sort given like certain constraints, right? Like you can't have like an O of N sort unless it's like a 
of course, like Radix or something, but like for certain inputs, you can only have certain um, big O time complexity, like minimum, like there's a lower bound for how fast you can get. So that's how I figured out like the optimal solution or like, yeah, that's how I figured out my solution was optimal um, for one of the problems. And then of course I discussed with my interviewer and then for some of the other problems, two of the three I had, I basically, um, I just had like an in-depth discussion and I pretty much asked my interviewer, okay, is this, um, do you want me to go any faster with the solution? Um, do you want me to try to get more efficient? Um, this is, a, and then I let them know like, this is um, in my mind, the most efficient and they would, they would confirm with me or let me know to go, you know, try to get a little better. But um, in my case, after I had explained like the brute force, which is what I typically do, um, I managed to get what was most optimal. Fair enough. Makes sense. So you do your best and then just check in like, hey, do you want me to improve this? Because I can, even though you're not sure you can, but I can yeah. see how that's a, that's a good strategy. Um, yeah, if I was in your shoes, I'd kind of do the same thing. Okay, but so you're clearly smart, quite clearly articulate. You know, I've, I've, I've met you before, had a you know, mock interview session, so I could tell. But how did you prepare for the interview? And the way I want to the, the way I want to phrase this question though is more like, was this a raw talent thing, or did you think your preparation made like a huge difference? It could be 50 fifty percent of what. That's what I'm curious about because if you if you did something very if something in your preparation is quite useful, um, it might be good to share. Right. Um, I would not say it's a talent thing. I don't really think I'm like some innately talented quote. I'd say I'm pretty average, maybe a little above average. Um, I, for prep, I did about 300 lead code questions with a lot of repeat questions. So basically just going through the need code 150 and doing most of those problems. And then just doing a lot of company specific, uh, excuse me, specific questions. Um, that was very helpful. I did, yeah, like I said, a little under 300 questions. Um, and that was very, very helpful just because it's good to get exposed to all those different DSA topics. I'm so glad that I wasn't hit with like a curveball that had no clue what was going on. Um, I also did mock interviews. Um, initially, I started with like free pramp interviews, but after a while, those aren't the most useful because the questions are repeated and the feedback is very, very limited because you're just getting feedback from people who are pretty much in the same shoes as you, right? They're just trying to get a job as well. So <laughs> it's it can only be so good. Um, and that's why I kind of like ended up here, you know, with co-editioning. Uh, that's pretty much, I didn't do anything like magical or special. I pretty much just like put the time in. I'd say I grinded leak code for like total time, probably like six months or so because I was doing it for a while, but on and off kind of like maybe like one question a week at times and then other times like two questions a day for like three weeks so like in total condensed it would be like six months of steady grinding steady grinding excuse me um so yeah, okay okay months. but this wasn't your first interview was it so you just aced google in your first shot or did you have so i know you did the, the mocks but did you interview anyone else um Actually, no, this is like my first like big tech interview. I had like an OA for another company, but this is my first big tech interview. I haven't okay. had like a official lead code style. Anyway. Yeah, that's really impressive. Um, I feel like Google, the fact that they really care how you think and, you know, they don't leak questions, I think that probably uh, played a role because I guess in other companies, the ones mm -hmm. that do repeat, like if someone's seen it before, they just have an edge over you. And it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I, I feel that as some fair. So I kind of like, um this but getting you know big tech offer in like your first few interviews that's that's not common by the way so really impressive um Thank you. when you did mocks with us there was this comment you made after like uh it was something like um let me see it was like i get what your channel does and i think you're referring to our youtube channel i was just curious what what it meant i don't know if you remember because obviously i'm trying to get like a message across to to the audience and like things they can do to avoid like uh, preventable mistakes or be better in like the technique for interviews but it seems like something made more sense when you had like that experience but i don't know if you still remember what it was um do you remember oh, saying that yeah 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 i actually do remember <laughs> because um you know when you're practicing and whatnot you you all of your information it's very easy to access you know it's like you're kind of in your comfort zone um and it's very easy but of course with these interviews even if it's just a mock right 
your brain basically puts you under pressure because it's like, okay, well, I've got whatever the TC is on the line and I've got to do well. Um, and so when you're sort of like in panic mode, of course, it's harder to retrieve information. And I recall watching a video that was like, you kind of have to practice to the point of having like your DSA knowledge in muscle memory, so to speak, to where you can just like retrieve it without thinking too hard because you might be under so much pressure. You can't really think too hard, even if you want to. Um, at least yeah, makes sense. It's like, I don't know, riding a bike. Um, at some point it becomes like reflexive and you don't really think about it. So if you were like being chased or something, you don't have to be thinking about how you ride a bike and also, you know, think about how you're dodging cars or <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's not the best analogy because it sounds like you're running away from police or something. But you know, uh, <laughs> it's the idea of being taken <laughs> being reflexive. Okay, good, good, good. We're almost at the end. So just curious, your team matching. I feel like I got a message from you saying, Oh, I've got team matching. And then you maybe a week after something you had a meeting and then maybe a week after you hadn't heard back and you were freaking out whereas i know people who spend months and yeah it's just like hell so for you it's quite quick um what was your team matching experience like and do you have tips for people going in there i don't know if there was something you did that made it faster or maybe you you were lucky i don't know what do you what do you what do you, what do you have for us um, I think it's a mixture of like luck and just like openness. I let my recruiter know that like, you know, I'm able to relocate literally anywhere across the US. So <laughs> I think that definitely played a part. I will say that like, I'm not gonna, you know, dox myself, but the city I'm working in is, um, it's definitely not in New York or LA, right? Uh, it's like, I'm I'm gonna be happy to be there, but it's not New York or LA. Like I was very open. And I would also say that I let my recruiter know I'm willing to work in pretty much any tech stack. So there were no limitations there. Um, and then another thing that might've contributed to the speed is the fact that the role that I applied for, it was kind of niche, like it was kind of a niche SWE role, right? So it's within Google Cloud's org as opposed to like, you know, uh, uh, an early careers, new grad SWE role, which is very general. So it was kind of like, you know, they're trying to fill like a relatively niche position, I guess. Maybe that contributed. I could be wrong. Well, but yeah. so it's a general new grad role. What do you mean by niche? Was it the skill set or something? Kind of just for the audience, because I, I didn't really I don't know what you mean by niche in this context. Oh well, I just to clarify, I did not apply for like a new grad general role. I applied for like um a Google Cloud specific role for SWE. Oh, okay, so niche in the sense as was cloud. Yeah, cloud yeah, specific. Like okay. a, yeah, specialized, more specialized. Ah, all right, all right, okay. So we kind of know the last question was what team you would join. We kind of have an idea. So you're doing something in the cloud space. Okay, so hopefully you help Google build better cloud technology than AWS and take over. But yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Any last tips or thoughts you want to share is there anything that you feel like oh i wish let me put it this way if you were to start again knowing everything you know obviously your experience is just this one-off anecdotal one but if you given everything you know if you could go back in time to, before you did your six month grind um mm -hmm. what would you do what things would you do differently um i would definitely do more like professional mock interviews i'm going to be honest just because those free mock interviews were not very good <laughs> um, and I think the practice interviews are definitely what like pushed me over the edge for like in terms of my confidence. And then on top of that, I would say while practicing lead code, just try to like think out loud in the same way that you might want to during an interview. That's very helpful. Okay. So you would still do like those 300 plus or so lead code problems to give you the, the coverage and that foundation. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, you've made it, and I think the sky's the limit, really. I think from here, you know, it's, you're gonna have loads of opportunities, and I'm glad you're like in a company that's investing in. It's like a big AI player because only who knows what's gonna happen with the AI revolution, but and cloud is gonna be important because you know there's a lot of training of models and so on. So I think you're in a safe space. Um, so just play your cards right. I know you're gonna make good decisions, and yeah, best of luck. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nita.